You don't even know how you look until you become low body fat. Although this sentence might sound extreme, there's definitely some truth to it. Body fat percentage, as we all already know, makes a big difference on the composition and appearance of the body. But for many people, one of the most significant results are sometimes overlooked. How the fat loss affects the face. The visible effects of weight loss can also very quickly be seen in the face. Nicholas Ruhl et al, who does clinical studies on these kind of things, stated that in average for a person of normal height, the weight loss is visible in the face already after losing about 3 kilograms. So what actually happens to the face when fat is lost? Fat is basically just excess energy stored around the body. There's two types of fat, visceral and subcutaneous. Both of these are similar and can be lowered by weight loss through diet and exercise, but subcutaneous fat is the fat that's stored under the skin and not deeper in the body around the organs like visceral fat. The main takeaway from this is that the subcutaneous fat is what makes the difference in appearance, at least facially, when losing fat. As the body fat percentage lowers, in general what happens is that the muscles will pop out more. When we look at the abdominal region of a person who lost body fat, we can see this. The muscles are more visible and the abs seem to have more depth, as well as appear more three-dimensional. The same thing will happen in an even more rapid pace in the face with bones like the zygomatic bones, aka the cheekbones, and the mandible, which is what makes the jawline pretty much, popping out. The face will appear more three-dimensional as the depth increases when facial fat drops. This alone could be a factor that increases attractiveness. According to Coleman et al, you have to assess the facial aesthetic from a three-dimensional perspective. And restoration of a youthful three-dimensional facial topography should be regarded as the primary goal in facial rejuvenation. So basically, a three-dimensional face is considered attractive, and this effect is enhanced by a lean face. Another trait that's highly affected by body fat percentage is the angularity of the face. Even a slight difference in fat gain can cause the face to lose angularity, where the roundedness of the cheeks makes the zygomatic bones lose its 3D-ness and causes a more rounded angle across the face down to the chin as well. As we all know, one of the more obvious signs of weight gain is an overall poofier face, as the zygomatic bones is the widest part of the face when the face is slim, but as the subcutaneous fat increases, the face will become wider in the part below the zygomatic bones, creating a rounder angle instead of the more steep straight line, or even inwards depending on how wide your jaw is. Weight gain will also probably make you lose valleys and contours in the under eye region, around the cheeks, the jaw and the chin. Since weight gain or loss to the face changes measurements, angles and 3Dness, it can cause some drastic changes to the overall harmony of the face as these examples show. For example, as we've covered, a face with higher body fat results in a wider cheek area and an overall wider face. This will affect how the distance between the eyes is perceived. As the face gets wider, it will make the eyes appear more close set and also smaller. This is just the general optical illusion that works not only in facial harmony but for anything really, that something will look smaller if what's surrounding it gets bigger. Which in this case obviously is the face, as it's widened by facial fat. This is also the case in reverse. As you lose weight, it can cause the illusion that your eyes are more wide set and bigger. Another way how your facial fat levels can make a difference to your eye area is the upper eyelids. Upper eyelid exposure is a frequently debated topic in facial attractiveness. Many people swear that the most attractive eye shape for males are hunter eyes, or more generally called hooded eyes. At the same time, many people, especially females, seek to lessen their upper eyelid exposure. This type of eye is achieved through a strong brow ridge, but can also be accentuated by fat in the upper eyelid area. 
Although it has been debated whether or not weight loss actually changes the fat in the upper eyelid, the anecdotal stories online is clear that it definitely makes a difference. Therefore, a higher fat percentage does not only make your eyes appear smaller, they also might become a bit more hooded too. This is actually one of the few benefits a higher body fat percentage can give the facial appearance if you want a more hunter-esque eye area. As previously stated though, the eye area is almost entirely dependent on your bone structure and any difference in facial fat will make a very small difference. A similar effect can be seen to the jaw as to the eyes. When facial fat is lost, the jaw appears wider as the face slims down around the cheeks. This obviously varies a lot depending on bone structure, but a wide jaw and a compact mid face will be enhanced for most people with a lower body fat percentage. I will go into detail on what's considered a healthy body fat percentage soon. The jaw from the front will also look more pronounced with lower body fat since the angularity increases in the bottom half of the face all the way from the zygomatic bones down to the chin. In studies, this type of airplane wings angle-esque jaw seemed to be rated as the most attractive and that kind is for most people only achievable at a lower body fat. Regarding the lower third of the face, a major difference in facial aesthetics after weight loss is seen from a side profile or three quarter profile view of the face. People store fat under the chin, around the hyoid bone, which can create a double chin and or a lower than ideal submental cervical angle, which is the angle connecting the neck to the jaw. Studies as this one have shown, and most people definitely already know this, consciously or subconsciously, that a close to 90 degrees submental cervical angle is ideal. That is because this measurement is highly correlated to health indicators such as low body fat duh, and a forward grown mandible. A lower angle of hanging fat and skin is also an indication of loss of skin elasticity and weight gain which can be a sign of aging, making the lower angle a neotenous which is youthful, feature as well. A lower body fat will improve the submental cervical angle and it will also at the same time make the jaw more visible. We all know that a jawline is considered attractive. Just look at the likes of Margot Robbie, Brad Pitt, Angelina Jolie, a young Johnny Depp and pretty much any other model or famous person known for their looks. The masseter muscle and gonial angle is hidden under facial fat if fat levels are too high. For men to have a chiseled jawline is one of the most sought after facial traits and to have a chiseled jawline you need to see at least some of the gonial angle and preferably the masseter muscle as well. This feature is regarded as attractive for both genders but might give an even bigger advantage to the males. A study published in the journal Nature Communications found that men with high levels of the hormone testosterone and certain stress hormones also have stronger immune systems and tend to have more masculine facial features, such as a strong jawline. So in summary, a strong jawline is actually a way to showcase your good genetics, which is what a lot of primal attraction really comes down to. To emphasize this jawline effect, one should also use the correct tongue posture and do mewing, which is a way to raise the hyoid bone and improve the submental cervical angle. If you want to learn how to do it, I'll link my video on the topic below. So, now we know that body fat levels can cause a huge difference in the face. Where should one aim to be body fat wise? Firstly, this is very individual since we store fat in different places in the body and there's a difference between the sexes too, as well as regarding your age. Research has concluded that the faces that were rated as most attractive were in the normal BMI range, more specifically the lower normal range. The raters saw a curvilinear correlation with normal BMI being at the top and typically overweight and underweight faces saw a drop in attractiveness. This is not shocking, but really emphasizes the importance of not losing too much weight. Another study saw something interesting regarding rating of female faces with different BMI. Female raters on average picked faces with a lower BMI than males did, 
meaning that men in general might prefer a bit more adipocele tissue, which again is fat, in the face than females do in female faces. This study was done on Western women and is also aligned with the Western beauty standards pushed upon us by the modeling world, which really favors sharp, angular and low body fat, low BMI people. Females might actually think, or at least be conditioned to think, that a lower than normal BMI is attractive, where men, according to the study, think that normal BMI is the most attractive face type. A sort of similar study has been made where they investigated the influence of facial correlates of body composition, fat mass and muscle mass, on the perception of masculinity in male faces. This study was sort of built on for the studies that have concluded that women have been found to prefer more masculine looking men when considering short term relationships compared with long term relationships. What's on topic for this video in the study I'm referring to was that results showed that women viewed more fat mass in the face as more masculine only in underweight to low normal weight men. So in conclusion, less adipocele tissue in the face, which generally is achieved through a lower body fat percentage, could raise attractiveness for many people. Although, as the studies show, normal slash healthy BMI looking faces are in general preferred over gaunt ones. Some facial features that are advantageous in modeling in the West, such as popping cheekbones, sharp jawline and hollow cheeks are hard to come by if the person doesn't have a very lean face. But what we need to understand too is that everyone's facial bones are different and many of these features will require very strong forward dentofacial growth as well as a forward grown maxilla. Therefore not everyone can stay within the healthy body fat percentage range and still achieve these features. Eating disorders are unfortunately very common in the modeling world and it's not worth starving yourself to try to achieve this look, since it will decrease your overall mood, energy levels and also most likely mess up your hormonal profile, which is bad and will possibly even make you look worse in the long run. But for most people this is not a concern, as it's much more common to be overweight in this day and age, and weight loss is a road worth going down for the vast majority. So what are the healthy body fat percentages? Well, according to American Journal of Clinical Nutrition, this depends on your gender as well as your age. For people aged 20 to 39, women should aim for 21 to 32% of body fat, somewhere around that spectrum. Men in this age range should have from 8% up to 19%. If you're above 40 years old, what's considered a healthy percentage is a bit higher. But strive to stay within this interval and you will be the best looking you and still healthy. If you're trying to get a modeling contract however, your best bet is to try to stay within the lower numbers of the normal range. One way to make sure you're on the right track is to get a scale which can measure body fat percentage. I will link the one I use down below. It works wonders and really boosts motivation to stay at a healthy, lean level. But that was all for this video. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, please comment and subscribe. Goodbye.